Good morning, Westgate Church. Welcome to another one of our Sunday morning services here, and especially warm welcome to anyone who's joining us for the first time on Westgate Church Online. We hope everyone's had a great week and that the weekend ahead is planned full of times of relaxation, of joy, and time with your loved ones. We've got an awesome service planned for you this morning, so gather up the family pet, share the link with your friends and family, and let's enter into a time of worship together. Come on, let's sing. He's a good, good father. You're a good, good father. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's 
crushing and oppressing, Lord. You're doing something new in us in 2020. To worship you this morning and give you praise with everything. Thank you, God. Let's sing. In the crushing and oppressing you will make it new wine. And the soil I, I got surrendered. You will break it new ground. Sing it out. And so I yield to you and to your careful hands. When I trust you, I don't need Yeah. 
name Jesus, Jesus bringing you on. How to faith, oh Jesus, Jesus bringing you on. How to faith, Jesus, Jesus bringing you on. How to faith, let's sing it out. It's where there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom. The kingdom is here. I lay down my old flames and carry your new fire today. Today, we love you, Jesus. Do something new in us, God. Who make me a vessel? Who make me an offering? Who, oh, Lord, I give you praise, God. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Hi, Westgate Church. We've got so much to pray for. Welcome to everybody online. I want you to join with me in prayer. We're going to invite the Holy Spirit to come and pray with us. There's so much to pray for, so much to pray for. We've had flash flooding this year. We've had bushfires, COVID-19. Now we've got protests, we've got riots, we've got deaths. We've got so much thing that's been happening in our world. And, and I'd imagine that there's so much uh, uncertainty and fear and anger and confusion and people looking and they're saying, where is God? Well, many of us know where God is, and we're going to cry out to the living God, the one that has the resurrected power. We're going to be aware of the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to ask for you to join and pray with me. We're going to put up a scripture, 2 Chronicles 7.14. I want you to read this loud with me. If, if, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Just as we're about to pray, I want to encourage us that God puts pressure. God puts an expectation on us as Christians. He's looking to the Christians to pray. He's looking for the Christians to humble themselves. He's looking for the Christians to seek His face. And then based upon what we do as the people and the children of God, God is going to respond and heal our land across the nations because Christians stood up and cried out to a living God, not a dead God. We're going to pray. Join with me in prayer. Lord Jesus, we cry out to a living God. We cry out to heal our land. We humble ourselves. We turn from our wicked ways. We repent. We say sorry. And we want a move of the Holy Spirit. We want the mighty rushing wind to blow across all continents, across the world, across the earth, to blow away all the anger, all the bigotry, all the racism, all the hatred, all the fear, the anger, the confusion. Fusion. We want the Holy Spirit to come and to blow it all the way. We want people to make decisions for Jesus Christ, to be born again, to be born of the Spirit. We want people to be born, uh, to be baptized in water, and we want people to be baptized in or with the Holy Spirit, to be empowered from on high. We break curses. We break everything that would come against our earth and our families. Satan, you cannot have your way with our earth, with our cities. We stand as people of God. We stand against that with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we say no. We draw a line in the sand and we say no. And we declare healing and blessing and favor and mercy and restoration to our city and to our nations right now in the mighty name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what denomination you're from. It matters that you lift up the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit will be with you to declare boldness and favor and life over our nations. Only one person can do that. One person, the Holy Spirit can do that. Not government, not anybody else. It is the Holy Spirit can do that. So we cry out to Him right now in Jesus' name. Fill your earth with your presence and make the nations bend and bow their knee to the power of a living God. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to sing one more song, church. And I want you to sing it 
like the Holy Spirit is just sitting right beside your shoulder and He is saying, come on, let's go to another level of worship to break the chains that have been placed on this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, let's worship together. Let's fight our battles this morning. With you, Jesus, sing it out. There's a table that you've prepared for me. In the presence of my enemies. It's your body and your blood you shed for me. And this is how I fight my battles. Do you believe it? Let's sing it out. There's a table this morning. There's a table that you prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. It's your body, Lord. It's your body and your blood you've shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. Let's sing out, I believe it this morning. And I believe you
around the table of communion this morning. It's love if you could play softly in the background. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Okay, so I'll give you some time while I start the communion message if you want to grab your own um, bread and wine at home or juice and a biscuit, which is what I'm using here. Whatever you've got, God knows our hearts. You know, I've been thinking about the song, New Wine, and I believe there's something amazing about that song in this season. You know, in my own personal life, I know it's quite amazing because I thought of this song the other day. I've been feeling a lot of crushing and a lot of pressing, and I know God is making something new and amazing in me. And my friend actually messaged me, and she said something about New Wine coming out of me, and I was like, wow, God you know, getting that message. And I believe that's for all of us that in this season, there is so much going on. It's not a coincidence that 2020 has been a crazy year in history and what has happened with the bushfires, with COVID-19 and now all the rioting in the US. How many crazy things have happened within six months, you know? And I believe it's time for us to rise up. I know that God is doing something new in His children. He wants to bring new wine out of us. He wants in the crushing, in the pressing. These things are going to come in life and we can complain about them. But you know what? In those times, that is when something new happens. That is when He brings out the new wine. You know, you can't have wine unless those grapes are crushed and pressed. And how good is that beautiful wine coming from those grapes? You get something out of something else, but you've got to go through a process first. So I just encourage you, let the Holy Spirit do something in you. You know, we've been going through Pentecost Sunday and we've been talking a lot about the Holy Spirit and we still are. And I believe it's all linked because if we realize that we have the Holy Spirit to live in us, to give us power, He will take us through the crushing and the pressing and the change and He will empower us to rise up and do something different in this time. This is a time we're living in that is no other. You know, in my short life here on earth. I've never seen anything like what has happened in six months of time. You know, I know that this world is not going to be here forever, that Jesus is coming back for His church, but it's time for us to rise up. And I just want to read to you just before we take the communion. You know, before Jesus left the earth, when He had um, the Passover, when He told us that He wouldn't be having the wine and drinking that again with us until the new kingdom when he's back with us. And it just made me think about the new wine. You know, we've got that to look forward to, but right now he's also creating new wine in us. So I just want to read, when the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus said, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. And this is from Luke 22, 14 to 20 in the New Living Translation. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks for it. Then he said, take this and share amongst yourselves. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is a new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. And I just love that knowing that we're going to have the new wine with Jesus in heaven. But there's something he wants to do on earth with us first, his children to rise up. So as we take this morning, I want us to thank Him for what He's done, but thank Him for what He's doing and allow Him to bring something new out of you. It might not be easy, it might be painful, but hey, He's bringing something new. So let's just thank Him today as we take the bread that sacrifices His body broken for us. Thank you, God.
And now we take the juice or the wine. And this is how we remember the blood that was shed, that was spilt for us. His body and his blood broken for us. This is how we fight our battles. Thank you, Jesus. We take this today and we thank you for everything that you did for us at the cross. We thank you, God. I just want to welcome Pat, great young man in our church. He's going to come up and do the offering for us. Let's give him a clap this morning. Thanks, Pat. Good morning again, Westgate Church. I'm going to share uh, a message for us for our tithes and offerings this morning. Uh, and I just wanted to start by saying that as Christian people, we should be people that love Jesus. When you love someone, you want them to have the very best of everything. To show that you love that person, you give them the thing that is of the most value to you. You give them the possessions, the things that have worth to your life. God gave up his own son for us because he loved us that much. And that's something that would have been the most precious thing to him. But he gave that up to us because of the love that he has for us as his children. God wants us to have his very best. And church, that right there was the start of our blessed life. We are truly blessed. We are truly rich because we have Christ. Because we have him, we have everything. In him, we are living a blessed life and we have the opportunity to bless others that are around us. We can give freely of ourselves in the knowing that God will provide for us all that we need and so much more. We have already got everything we need in our Saviour. Jesus is our wisdom and our strength. He's our provision and our sacrifice. He is our redemption and our success. Through Him, we can have all of the treasures of this world that we need and more. And hey, what's a few tithing dollars to someone who's already got everything they need? Let's have a look at the miracle that Jesus performed in the feeding of the 5,000. John records that the people ate as much as they wanted until they were filled. In other words, they ate and ate until they could eat no more. And then what happens next is on your screen. In John 6, 12 to 13, in the New King James I'm using, it says, So, when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, so that nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. In other words, even though 5,000 people took their fill from a handful of bread loaves and a handful of fish, they still had plenty left over, 12 baskets of leftovers. God's supply of provision will always exceed our demand. He is such a big God and great God that there is nothing He can't do. So the question that I have for us this week as we tithe is this. If God is big enough and good enough to supply all of your provisions, how much provision can you supply to someone else? Because of what He can give you. I want to pray this morning for all the people who are sending in their tithes and offering to our Westgate Church. We know that there's so many things that we want to do in our community here in Westgate and so much with our building fund that we are looking to be able to expand and enter into more people in our community. So Father, this morning I just thank you and I bless all of those people who have given their tithes and offerings into your hands this morning, Lord God, because they know and can trust that you will provide all the things that they need for their life. We pray, Lord God, that you bless abundantly all of those provisions that they are giving to the church, giving to your church, so that they can meet the needs of your children and that you would abundantly give back into their lives and provide everything that they need. In your name we pray. Amen. Before I invite Pastor Shane up to deliver our message this morning, just want to have a couple of announcements for everyone. 
Again, for those people who uh, are new to our Westgate Church community, we've got our Westgate Church Facebook page. The link is on our Westgate online, so you can just click straight into that there. Join up so that you can keep in contact with our Westgate community. We've also got plenty of other ways to keep in touch with us. On Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock, we have an hour prayer and praise night held here at the church and live streamed into your very living room. A uh, whole hour of praying for the needs of our community, the needs of the world. You can send in your prayer requests to us and have us pray for you there and then. It's been building so well over the last couple of weeks. We're getting hundreds of people viewing those videos now. 20 or so people watching online with us every Wednesday night and interacting with us. We've also got a Thursday morning Zoom chat for the ladies of Westgate Church. So you can contact Pastor Dawn if you want to be involved in that Thursday morning Zoom chat. It's at 10.30 every Thursday. And if you're a young adult, we have a Zoom chat on a Thursday night. So you can contact Brittany to find out the details of our Thursday night young adult Zoom. Westgate Ladies have also just started their very own Facebook page. So there's a Westgate Ladies Facebook page full of devotionals and a whole bunch of sharing from all the different ladies in our Westgate community. Uh, contact Pastor Beck or Pastor Dawn or Alyssa if you want to be involved in that Westgate Ladies group. And the last one is our kids. On our Westgate Church page, there's videos being uploaded as part of our Kids Challenge where the kids have to respond to different clues and uh, problems every week and send that in. It's a way for our kids to stay connected with us. It's a way for our kids to be connected to God. And it's a way for us to be able to have a, a good, fun competition for our kids during this time when everything's a bit out of whack uh, and to be able to bless our kids abundantly when they come back into church. So keep an eye on our Westgate Church page for the next video, which will come out today. Uh, and also keep an eye out, if you're a Westgate, cheer, uh, Westgate Church kid, on our Westgate Empower chat. All the church leaders, uh, kids' church leaders, are making videos to send out for our Westgate kids talking about all of our different Bible heroes and sharing a story. So make sure you keep on the Westgate Empower chat for all the rest of those kids. Hope you have a great weekend, everyone at Westgate Church. I'd like to invite Pastor Shane up, who's going to share with us about the most important person in the world. Welcome, Pastor Shane. Hey, thank you, Patrick. That's awesome. It's so good to be with you, Westgate Church Online. I want to say a big welcome to everybody who is watching this morning. I want to say welcome to Fiji, welcome to all of our Westgate Church family, other parts of the earth. And we've also got Baptists and Lutheran and Catholic brothers and sisters watching on the internet as well that I know about. I want to welcome you to our service. I'm the lead pastor of our church with my beautiful wife, Pastor Rebecca. Uh, we love you, we miss you, and we're going to learn lots this morning. We're going to have lots of fun, so I want you to sit on the edge of your seat, relax, get hungry, and really dig into with me, uh, trying to understand what the Holy Spirit is all about. He's a real person. He's not a thing or an it. The Holy Spirit is a real person. Last week, I preached about what... What is happening this year, last week, I uh, preached about what really matters. And when we look at what is happening this year, we look at all the bushfires, we look at all the floods, we look at George uh, Floyd, we look at uh, all the riots that are happening, we look at 432 Indigenous people that had died in custody. All these things are happening and they're all tragedies, they're all sad. And in amongst it, uh, the everyday person that is going, scratching their head, going, what do we do next? What do we do now? What is going on? What, who do we lean to? Who do we talk to? Which is the right direction to go? One of the things we did this week as a church is we believe that when you're going through a tough time, ask the Holy Spirit to give you ideas, to give you moments of kindness, of goodness, of mercy and grace to your fellow man, to your fellow neighbor. Uh, last Thursday, just a couple of days ago, we went into uh, school at Goodna, Westside Christian College, and we bought coffees for all the primary school teachers just to say thank you for doing such a good job, such a good job with our students online. 
And just a little funny joke I wanted to share was I was in one of the staff rooms and some of the teachers hadn't got their coffees yet. And they said, oh, we haven't got our coffees yet. And I started to laugh and I looked at them and I said, sorry, uh, I've worked out a denominational system. Uh, and I'm sorry to tell you that the Baptists, they're going to go last. And of course, there were some Baptists in the room and they're like, hey, hey, what's going on? Hey. And I said, no, no, it's all good. Just a bit of a joke, and everybody laughed, and it was all friendly, and it was all fun. But I want to encourage you today, what kind things can you do during all this rioting, all this hatred, all this uh, protesting? Because there's so much of that stuff out there, and so many of, of us have got an opinion on what we should do and what we shouldn't do during that time. And I want to read a couple of quotes from Dr. Martin Luther King uh, in this time. Uh, I know a little bit about him. I don't claim to know all about him, but I know that he's got some quotes that really can talk to us. The first quote is this, the time is always right to do what is right. The time is always right to do what is right. Are you prepared to do what is right even when other people are doing what is wrong? The second quote is this, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. And we believe in the life, light, and increase of Jesus Christ to drive out the death, darkness of stuff that's out there. We believe that Jesus can do that. So the big question is, during all this time of turmoil, what is our response as Christians in this day during all of these things? Uh, there's going to be protests over the weekend. I pray that nobody gets hurt and nobody gets damaged or killed or injured. I pray that there are innocent people that don't get caught up in the mess. And a lot of people are going to be fearful that COVID virus is going to spread rapidly because lots of protesters are going to get together. And hear me very clearly, I'm not going to give you my opinion of what people should or shouldn't do, but I will give you my thought process on what we should do as a humanity. My second question is this, what is your response watching at home? Uh, are you going to go out and protest? Are you going to stay at home and criticize and get involved in all those things? But I want to say that this is my opinion, this is my thought process, this is my truth. I'm going to focus on the most important person on earth the most important person on earth, that is the Holy Spirit. He is the most important person on earth. I want to give you a, a fun fact that I found out. Uh, I was getting really frustrated with sushi. I don't know if you've been really frustrated with sushi, but I get really frustrated with sushi. I buy it home, uh, bring it home, I put it on the bench, I have some, I have some left over, I put it in the fridge, and then I bring it out the next day, and it's hard, and it's chewy, and it doesn't feel right. But yesterday, I had a breakthrough. I wrapped all the sushi rolls really tightly in Glad Wrap. Then I put it in a container. The next day, I went to have sushi, and it came out fresh. Fresh, fresh, fresh. So if you want your sushi to come out really, really fresh... Wrap it tightly in glad wrap so the next day it will be just so delicious. So delicious. What's that got to do with the message today? We have got everything to do with the message with what I talked about sushi in glad wrap. We're going to put up Ephesians 4.30, New King James. Ephesians 4.30. I'm going to read it out to you. And do not... Grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. This is my son, Seth. He's 12. Yeah, his second time of worship, I love him so much. And he's going to help me do the illustration. And the scripture says, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. That speaks of the born again experience, to be born again, to be born of the spirit. We are a three-part being, body, soul, and spirit. Our spirit needs to be born again. So I'm going to ask you, fine young man, to uh, hold this microphone. And I'm going to show you what this looks like practically.
good. Good. Yep. So now here we go. Stuff that in there. It's got it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap him. We're going to seal my son up. We're going to seal him. So we're going to seal him. We're going to seal him really tight. How does that feel right now? Not too bad. Can I go a bit tighter? Yeah. Great. I've been looking forward to this. The only disadvantage is I didn't plan to seal his mouth shut, but we'll get to that later. Okay. So. Okay, great. Thank you for the microphone. I want to say the scripture says that he was sealed for the day of redemption. When you come to Jesus and you ask him to come into your heart, into your life, the Bible says that you were sealed until the day of redemption. And we look at Seth, he is sealed. I want my wife, I want my kids, I want my son, my daughter, my community sealed to the day of redemption. While Seth is here, we're going to read these next two scriptures. John 3.3 3 says this, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, verily, verily, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then we're going to flick to John 3.5. Jesus answered, most assuredly, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So as we come back to me, he is born again. He has accepted Jesus into his heart. He is he's received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, not in the Holy Spirit, not with the Holy Spirit, but of the Holy Spirit. He is sealed for the day. Do you feel cozy? In a way. In a way. Do you feel sealed? Yes. And also, when you get born again, when you give your life to Jesus, He locks in love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, self-control. He locks the fruit of Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. He locks that in through sealing you for the day of redemption, the born-again experience. If you haven't been born again today, that is what Jesus wants for your life. He wants to seal you up and protect you to take you to heaven. Now, uh, I'm not going to make him walk. His uncle Joe's going to carry him out uh, because he's all wrapped up and he's all sealed. You see, there's a big difference between being born of the Spirit, which is the fourth first birth, the first breath, and the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which empowers you and clothes you with power from on high. You and I need to be clothed with power from on high. <coughs> Last week, I spoke about three baptisms, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the baptism in water, and the baptism in and with the Holy Spirit. The first one means you're a new person. You've got salvation. You're going to heaven. The one in water means the old person is cut off. We are buried and alive and clean. And the third one is Jesus baptizes us in the Holy Spirit is the power to walk new. We've got another illustration. We're coming in hot right now. My son has now, oh, oh, we've got a bit of an accident there, but we're coming in. We've got another illustration that we're going to shoot on to, to do with the baptism in the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Joe. Come on, on, come on Seth. <coughs> okay, this is how it works. So, Seth is quickly going to fill up the cup, about eight tenths, with milk. And the milk represents your human spirit, which was dead to God before it met Jesus. Before Jesus, your human spirit is dead to God. So that's you. That's your human spirit. And it's full of sin, mistakes. If you've ever lied, murdered, stole, uh, looked at someone, hated someone, done all those things. If you've ever uh, even did one thing wrong against the Ten Commandments, you and I have all done that. We've sinned. So that's our spirit in there. Now, 
the baptism of the Holy Spirit being born again looks like this. If you can pour some of that in there. <coughs> We're going to go about a quarter. That's all right. I do the washing at home, so if you make a mistake, let's pour it. Come on, big squeeze, big squeeze. Let's get it in there. Oh, I'm going to help you. That's right. Okay, stop right there. Okay, right. When you get born again, if you can see it, the Holy Spirit sits inside your life. He is in there, and He has given you faith and love and goodness and kindness and peace. He's given you a measure of that, but that is different to the baptism in the Holy Spirit. When you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, we're going to do a couple of things right now. We're going to, uh, if you can catch, catch that one. That's great. We're going to catch that one. Hey, that's good. Good teamwork. So at the moment, if that was Seth, he'd be born again. He's going to heaven. He's sealed like we did before. Now watch happens when Seth stirs the water, the milk. You stir it. I'm embarrassed. Did your, did your, did your mother teach you how to? How to stir. <laughs> we need to do more lessons with you. Okay, that's great. Okay, wait there, buddy. Wait there. Okay, no, leave it in there. That's good. Okay, so as you can see, as per the illustration, now we're full of the Holy Spirit. We're baptized in the Holy Spirit. They are two separate experiences. Thank you, Seth. That's great. You can uh, drink that. That's your breakfast, lunch, and dinner tomorrow. Give him a hand as he walks off. Thank you so much, Seth. So I want to explain to you that there is two separate experiences of and in. And to further clarify that this subject really causes a lot of controversy across a lot of denominations. Maybe if you're uh, Catholic or if you're Lutheran or if you're Baptist or if you're from another denomination and you still don't agree with that teaching, I can handle that. I'm fine with that. I love you. You love me. We're not going to start a big Christian crusade and war. But please understand, when you look through church history and when we go through the rest of the message, you're going to see that there is a separate experience called the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We're going to flick over to a story about a guy called Dr. Jerry Horner. Dr. Jerry Horner used to be a very staunch Southern Baptist at a university in America. And he was a professor who was one of the top Greek scholars in all of America. He was really, really respected. He is probably as high up as you could go in the Baptist realm, Southern Baptist realm. And he started to write a book against the baptism in the Holy Spirit. This guy... Love Baptist. This Baptist man started to write a book against the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I wonder if you can see where this is going. In his study to prove that the baptism of the Holy Spirit does not exist, he got baptized in the Holy Spirit. He said he had a problem. Here he was speaking in tongues in his study. Now he had to go and tell the professors at the university what happened to him. <coughs> For months he had to keep this quiet. He did not know what to do. And then I found another article of a, of a Baptist man who got a position. He studied. He got a position in a Baptist church. And this is his account meeting Dr. Jerry Horner during this time. <clears throat> he says, Larry Olison said this, I accepted the call and became senior pastor of a Baptist church, Southern Baptist church. My world was a Baptist world. I lived completely within my world. I'm not saying that I looked at things one-sided, but I felt that if you weren't a Baptist, then something was wrong with you. Can I say what? Whether you're Pentecostal, whether you're Lutheran, whatever you are, as Christians, let's get rid of that horrible way to live and point the finger and say there is something wrong with you if you're from another denomination we're all on a journey to find the truth from God I learned lots of things from other denominations but I hold true what I've learned today and so he said that then something was wrong with you and then on July 4th the 4th of July 
a big bang like American independence. Dr. Jerry Horner, the guy who was writing the book against the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he laid hands on me and I was filled with the Holy Spirit. My entire world changed. I came to startling revelations. One was this, even though spirit-filled Christians believed in the same God and Jesus as the Baptist, there were some other great doctrinal differences. So this other Southern Baptist guy got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Then we flick back to the rest of the story with Dr. Jerry Horner. So the Southern Baptist University gave him an assignment to prove the baptism in the Holy Spirit doesn't work, like so many people out there still believe today. And in the process of him trying to prove it, it happened to him. How is he going to explain it to the board of professors at the Southern Baptist University? How is he going to do it? He was then released from his job. He was sacked. The next day, he was called from Oral Roberts University one of the best universities in America for learning Christianity, Oral Roberts University. <clears throat> and uh, he accepted the job. Oral Roberts University states in their foundational principle of the school, this school is built on the Holy Spirit. He became the dean of Oral Roberts, the dean of biblical studies, preaching and teaching the power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, casting out devils, speaking in tongues, interpreting tongues. That's where God took him. That is why he is such a man of great love and passion today. And I want to say this. If you don't believe in the baptism in the Holy Spirit, don't kick it if you've never had it. Don't kick it. Don't dismiss it. Don't throw it away. Do some more research with this if you don't believe in it. Mind your own business if you don't agree with it. Don't start a war or trouble, but do some research yourself. We're going to look at some more scriptures. We're running out a little bit of time, so I'm going to read these really quickly. Matthew 3.11 says this, I indeed... Baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Holy Spirit and fire. Now, last week, if you didn't watch the message, please watch it. It will support what I'm saying today. <clears throat> so, theologically, people argue about a lot of things. I got born again at the age of 12, and then at the age of 17, I got water baptized. Age of 19, I got filled with the Holy Spirit, but then I felt the Holy Spirit talking to me so clearly. At 17, I wasn't in church. I was doing all the wrong things. I was, I was following uh, the nightclubs and wrong lifestyles and drinking excess alcohol and whatever else there is out there, uh, 17, 18, <clears throat> That kind of thing. And then at the age of 21, when I went to Bible college, God said, get water baptized again. So if you're watching this and you got water baptism the first time and, and you didn't feel right about it and the Holy Spirit says, do it again, I'll do it again. If you're from a church that won't do it, we'll do it right here for you. And so I went to do it again and I'm sitting there in the congregation ready to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'm sitting there and one hour before I'm about to get baptized, I kid you not, from my belt up, I had strong waves of electricity and tingles buzzing through my body for one hour. <coughs> I went into the baptism of water under completely and then up again, and for the next two hours, I was on fire. I was buzzing with electricity, and that was the Holy Spirit confirming I had done the right thing. So if you want to get water baptized again, go do it. Obey God. Do the right thing. Acts 2, 38, 39 says this, Then Peter said to them, Repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, to be born again. And then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Can I say, the promise is for you, it's for your children, and it's for everybody. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is for Catholics, it's for Lutherans, it's for people that have just been born again. It is for everybody, and He will show up if you let Him in. This is, this is the way I look at it. If we want the world to change, there are 7 billion people in the world, over 7 billion people. I want to suggest to you today that you sitting on your couch, 
you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. You get your family baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I believe 10% of uh, 7 billion would be 700 million. I believe 1% of 7 billion would be 70 million. I believe if there were 70 million Christians that were baptized, born again, baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Spirit, I believe that the wind of the Holy Spirit would shake the whole world up and the world would change. The world would change dramatically. So let's stop looking at what other people are doing. Let's look at ourselves and go, are we baptized in the Holy Spirit and are we demonstrating His power? Let's go. Acts 18, 14, 17 says this. Now when the apostles, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them who... When they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They then laid hands on them. They received the Holy Spirit. I want to say that all through the book of Acts, you see there were disciples, there were apostles that were born again. And then people came up to them and said, have you received the baptism in the Holy Spirit? And they're like, I don't understand that. What is that all about? So I ask you the question. We're going to read another scripture in just a moment. But I ask you the question, why, why, would, uh, why would Peter and John go up to apostles and disciples and ask them to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit if they were already disciples. It's because there is a separate experience we need to experience to get the power of demonstration ahead. Acts 19, 1 to 6. And it says, And finding some disciples, he said to them, See that? And finding some disciples, he said to them, Not people that didn't know God. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Then it says, so he said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And then it says, into John's baptism. The the lady on the overheads, uh, the screen is doing an awesome job. Thank you, Rose. Then Paul said, John indeed, indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, being born again, saying to the people that they should believe on him, that Then we read, and when they had heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. They spoke with other tongues. I want to say this. We need to demonstrate the power of God. If you have been born again and baptized in the Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to get out of your house and start to share the love of God. If someone's sick, pray for them. If someone is demon-possessed, I'm not trying to freak you out, cast out their devil. If you've been saved and baptized in the Holy Spirit, one day later, you can do this in the name of Jesus. You can do this. Someone has got a bung knee, someone's got a bung neck, someone's got a dodgy eye, a dodgy ear, and they tell you about it, lay hands on them. They will recover, the Bible says. Also, the other thing is, if you have the power of the Holy Spirit, I want to encourage you today, the more of the Holy Spirit you have, the more of the love and the joy and the peace that you have for others. I have met a lot of rude Christians that have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. They can be over-aggressive. They can be over-kooky, over-weird. They can be strange. They don't necessarily fit in society. And don't be like that. Don't be like that. The closer you are to the Holy Spirit doesn't mean the more weird that you're going to get. But I've met a lot of people that are really weird, fanatical, and they do weird things. We're not called to do any of those things. The more of the Holy Spirit you have with you, say this, good morning, Holy Spirit. I love you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're my best friend. The more you talk about the Holy Spirit, the more He's going to turn up in your life. And if you walk around and saying that you're a believer and you love God, stop criticizing, stop grumbling, stop murmuring, stop backbiting, stop getting over-aggressive, stop taking it out on people. Because the closer we get to God, the less 
That happens. Can I say that if you're having a problem with your, your, fa- your husband or your wife or your dad or your mom or your children, get into the Holy Spirit. Start to talk to the Holy Spirit. I find most of the time in church, if I have an issue with someone in church or with another person and, and I've done everything I feel was right under God and there's still a disconnection, then maybe they're not spending enough time with the Holy Spirit to make their life right. Because the more time you spend with the Holy Spirit, the sweeter, the tastier, the more loving that you become. And you know what? The Bible says that Jesus was moved with compassion. And I believe that if you have more of the Holy Spirit and you're aware of Him more and you treat Him like a best friend, a person, you're going to become so compassionate that you're going to change the world. So we're about to close, and I want to close with this. Some of the things that the Holy Spirit has done to move over my life is not just pray for people to see miracles, but I sponsor sponsor girls to get out of child sex slavery. I also send money for Bibles for Africa. We also sponsor a child. We also send money to Vietnam to get children to get their cleft palates fixed. You know, we give tithes and offerings into our church. Uh, We do things in our community. I allow the Holy Spirit to talk to me to be an answer of kindness in this dying and hurting world. I'm going to flick up one more scripture, and then we're going to close on that, because there's other scriptures that can support this. We're going to go to Acts 13, Acts 13, 50 to 52. It says, but the Jews stirred up devout and prominent women and the chief men of the city raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them and came to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. So this is a final uh, talk to us as Christians that have been baptized in the Holy Spirit for many, many years. I've met a lot of Christians that have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, received the Holy Spirit, and they've become really dry, really dry with their Christianity. Can I tell you biblically that we're meant to, every day, every week, every month, we're meant to get refreshed and refilled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, He's drenched us with His presence and His power, but we're meant to come to the Holy Spirit every day and say, Holy Spirit, fill me again. Fill me again. What would Westgate Church look like? What would your church look like if every believer in the church every day of every week came up and said, Holy Spirit, fill me again. Refresh me again. Renew me again. Holy Spirit, I want to do your work. Holy Spirit, I love you. Church, family, can I say this? Continue to run after the Holy Spirit and continue to be filled and refreshed with the Holy Spirit. Let's close our eyes and pray. This was a very confronting message. This was not a message of condemnation. This was not a message of uh, putting other denominations down. I did not do that. Did not put other people groups down. But I want to say that if you want to change the world, no amount of protests will be better than a world turning their face to the power receiving the Holy Spirit in their lives. If we could just get 1% of the world, 1% of the world to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, that would be enough to send a wind to change our world with the love of God forever. If you have not been born again this morning, like I did with my son, I wrapped him up with glad wrap to seal him for the day of redemption. If you have not done that, or if you have walked away from God, or if you have turned your back on God, God says, hey, I still want you back. I still love you. Come back to me. Let's say this prayer together. Lord Jesus, I ask you, to forgive me for all my sin. Forgive me for walking away. Forgive me for rebelling. In the name of Jesus, I ask. 
and I choose Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. I receive a deposit of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I am a child of God. And one more thing I want to say is on behalf of our church and many other Christians, I know that myself included, there have been times where I have grieved the Holy Spirit, where I have sorrowed the Holy Spirit, where I have ignored the Holy Spirit, and I have uh, never been more convicted of that in my life as I have now. And I want to ask you today, are you in the same boat? Have you neglected the Holy Spirit? Because the more room you make for the Holy Spirit, the better your marriage, your children, your life, your finances, your future, and everything in your world will be if you make more room for the real person, the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray, Lord, I ask you to forgive us for neglecting you and grieving you, and we invite the power of the Holy Spirit to refresh us once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, everybody online. We love you. Uh, please message us, text us, be a part of our service, and please share this service all over the world because this is a very important teaching that will set people free. We love you. God bless you. Thank you.